Welcome everyone to our Fast 2021 Daily Devotionals. My name is Mike, and I'm going to share with you how fasting helps us to be spirit-led. Now, my first verse is Romans 8, 6. It says, So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. And I don't know about you, but I think all of us could use a whole lot more of the life the Spirit gives and the peace that God brings. So our first point is, we need the leading of the Holy Spirit. Before I jump into how fasting helps us become more Spirit-led or makes room for the Holy Spirit to lead us better, I want to talk about something that Pastor Marcos pointed out. This is an insight straight from him, and it's this. The Holy Spirit doesn't always lead us where we want to go but he always leads us where we need to go. In Luke chapter four, verses one and two, we catch the story of Jesus right after this incredible power encounter where God has opened up the heavens, the Holy Spirit has come down in the, in the form of a dove, and God's voice has come and said, this is my son and whom I am well pleased. Jesus has this amazing power encounter and we pick up his story in Luke chapter four, verses one and two. It says, now Jesus, full of and in perfect communication with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they ended, he was hungry. So the first thing we note is this is Jesus's first documented fast. This is a fast the first time we see Jesus fasting. But it's also interesting to note that the Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness. Now this word wilderness comes from a Greek word, eremos, which means a place of uncertainty, solitary, desolate, uncultivated, often used of persons who have been deserted by others, especially by friends and family. Now, I know most of us, if not all of us, have had that wilderness experience at some point in our life. For me, it came at the end of 2017. I've been serving at a church in San Francisco for a little bit over 10 years, and my pastor, my closest friend, my spiritual father, a confidant, was asked to step down from his position as our leader. That was devastating for me. I didn't know how to move forward. I didn't know what was going to take place. I was in a place of uncertainty. Here I had been serving with this church for more than 10 years. I had great relationships, wonderful friends. In fact, my sister was in ministry with me there, and I felt God clearly say it was time for me to move. I didn't know where to go, and I ended up making a phone call to my aunt, who's a missionary in Mexico. And this is the crazy part about this journey. Now, I was very blessed to have a place to go, a place of ministry, a place where my family was, but I ended up in the desert, literally. My aunt is a missionary in Mexico. She works in a small village called Chimetla, right outside of La Paz in Baja, California. That place has dirt roads, a whole lot of sand, cactus, vultures, and it's very hot. It is a desert in every sense of the word. So here I was in a literal desert, wondering what God was doing. And I have to believe that Jesus, even though he was in perfect communication with the Spirit, might have had some of the same thoughts that I had. God, where are we going? What are we doing? What, why do you have me here being tempted or tested in this point in my life? But I have some good news. The wilderness always precedes the promised land. You know, in Exodus, when God tells us the story of how he brought his people out of Egypt, before they got to the promised land, they had to go through a wilderness. When you look at Jesus' story, he didn't launch his ministry from that power encounter at the Jordan. He launched his ministry from the wilderness. He needed to go and be tested. He needed to go into a place of uncertainty, a place of desolation before he could launch that world-changing ministry. In my life, when I went into that wilderness, I didn't know what to expect. But you know what I've seen? God brought me to the Way World Outreach, and I have been blessed at every level, far beyond anything that I could imagine. It, relationally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, God has literally done things that I did not think were possible. He's blessed me more in the last year and a half than the 10 years that I did ministry in San Francisco. God is in the business of taking us through the wilderness to the promised land, and that's what the Spirit does when, they, when He's leading us. So, let's talk about how 
we can have the Holy Spirit lead us more because we want to make it to that promised land. First, two ways fasting helps us to be more spirit-led. The first way is fasting breaks up the pattern and allows the spirit to transform our thinking, which is our life. Romans 12.2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So fasting is a choice to break out of our patterns or our habits to stop conforming to the patterns that have been happening in our past. You know, William James is a father, considered the father of American psychology, and he says, we are stereotyped creatures, imitators, and copiers of our past selves. In other words, we tend to fall into habits. We tend to repeat the things that we did in the past. Edward Edgar Rice Burroughs, a famed author, says it this way, we are, all of us, creatures of habit. So what fasting does, it enables us to identify the habits in our life and consciously choose to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us about those. Do we want them in our life or do we not? One habit that I identified just a couple months ago when we were doing our seven-day detox was my habit of going on to the news feeds on my phone. I either visit Apple News or Google News all the time. And, you know, I use my phone for ministry. I have a calendar there. I access my email, my text messages. I'm in constant in communication with people, so I'm on my phone a lot. But the crazy thing is to find myself at times on my phone looking at that newsfeed without even really realizing I was doing it. And it didn't matter how many times I told myself I was wasting time or that worse yet, I was going to walk away from that time looking at the newsfeed feeling more depressed or down. I kept finding myself doing it. And it took that fast for me to really give the space for the Holy Spirit to come in and say, you don't need that in your life. Now, I'm not saying don't be educated, don't keep track of the newsfeed, but this fasting moment allowed me to really identify something that was not bringing life and peace to my life. So that's point number one of what fasting does. It helps us to identify habits and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and really break those, get rid of some of the ones that don't belong, and maybe even reinforce some of the good habits that we have. The second reason, and I'm just going to close with this one today, is fasting turns down the noise and allows us to hear God's voice more clearly. So it turns down the noise of life and allows us to hear God's voice more clearly. I love this story in 1 Kings chapter 19. This is the story of Elijah who has just come off an incredible victory over the false prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. He is now world famous, at least regionally famous. Everyone knows his name. They're talking about him. A lot of people singing his praises, but a couple key powerful people, including the queen of Israel, is looking to kill him. And so somehow Elijah in this moment forgets all the power that has just thrown through his, gone through his life, all the power that God did, and is running from this moment. He's got a lot of noise going on, people that are praising, people that are threatening, things that he can't seem to quite get a grasp on. And God meets him in the middle of a wilderness and gives him a meal and tells him to take a 40-day journey in which he's fasting all the way to Mount Sinai. And this is where I want to pick up the story of Elijah. It's 1 Kings 19, verse 11 and 13. It says, The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart, shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, went out, stood at the mouth of the cave, and a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? I love this story because it reveals how this 40-day fast provided an opportunity for Elijah to let the noise die down in his life. All the threats, all the praise, all the noise even that God uses to illustrate things that are going on in his life dies down in this moment and allows him to hear that still small voice where God is meeting him. I love this about fasting because fasting is a, is a way that we can really tune in to God's voice and let some of the other noise die down in our life. In my own life, I've recognized that this has taken place in a few ways. One way is in my entertainment choices. A few years ago, a movie came out that I really enjoyed and I recommended it to a friend. That friend came back to me and said, Mike, I can't believe you recommended that movie to me. And it was crazy because I had watched it without really feeling any hitch at all. I didn't sense any, anything wrong with the movie at all. He said, I think you need to take a little time to fast and maybe go back and check that out. 
and I did. And you know, after watching it, when I had gone through a period of fasting, every swear word in that movie felt like a dagger through my heart. I recognized that I had been deaf, I had been kind of numbed to the fact that there was a lot of things in there that I didn't want in my spirit, I didn't want in my life. And it took fasting for me to really begin to recognize, oh, that's the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, this doesn't belong in your life. And that's one of the things that fasting can do for us, is really allow us to hear God's voice over the noise and some of the things that might distract us from hearing His still, small voice. So two things that you can do that will allow you to be more spirit-led in terms of fasting. Fasting one will allow us to break up the pattern and get rid of some of those bad habits. And fasting two will allow us to turn the noise down so that we can hear God's voice more clearly. I pray that throughout the course of this fast, you will hear God's voice even better than you have before.